Chris. Welcome back to the Green Malt. This is whiskey review number... I can't remember. It's a whiskey review. It's going to be about Glenn Farkless, 12-year-old. Um, Glenn Farkless, we're going to head back to space after this one. Spent a lot of time with Glenn going in the Highlands. But uh, going to visit one of my other favorite distilleries. They're an interesting one because they're one of the few family-owned distilleries that's been operating for a long time. They've been running it for 130 years, the Grant family that is, but six generations, I think. And they still are, and they've done a great job with it. They've done a fantastic job of maintaining a high level of quality, of not really succumbing to uh, you know, promotional gimmicks to build their brand, but just producing a consistently great product. And one of the things they're notable for is generational foresight. Like they've laid away a whole whack of uh, casks over the generations. Something like 50,000 barrels they have laid away right now. And these go back decades and decades and decades. So it's fantastic forethought, fantastic planning. I guess one of the things that has allowed them to remain a family owned distillery so good on them. I love them. I uh, was fortunate enough to be able to visit the distillery when I was in Scotland. Sadly, wasn't able to take a tour. Got there too late in the day, but I was able to visit the, the visitor center and lovely tasting room that they have there. Try some very good, uh, very interesting, very complex small batch releases or slightly older family cask releases. And uh, unfailingly, they are impressive, often challenging, like I said, very complex. And I should point out, I know that in the, uh, the Glenn Goyne 15 year old review, I mentioned that I'm sometimes disappointed by some of the older releases of Glenn Farkless. And if that's the case, it's only because I'm such a big fan of things like their 15 year old, their Glenn Farkless 105, cask strength, sherry bomb release, just beautiful stuff. So when I try a 17-year-old or a 21-year-old and I'm not blown away, I'm just a little bit disappointed by that. And that might be unfair of me. Maybe my bar is set too high. Maybe it's unreasonably high. But that should be a compliment to the distillery, not a negative. Because my expectations are just, they've been built up so much by the quality of stuff that I've tasted from Glenn Farkless. I said the 17 and 21-year-old might not have been mind-blowing to me. The 25-year-old was. I thought the 25-year-old Glenn Farkless was a wonderful whiskey. And uh, it's something I aspire to have in my collection one day. So, I mentioned they're a Speyside distillery. They are in the town of Ballandillock. I'm sure I butchered that name, I'm sorry. But uh, not far from towns like Dufftown and Craig Um Lots of wonderful distilleries in there, and this certainly is one of them. They're notable for having very large stills. They might be the largest stills in the industry, I believe. And one of the few distilleries that still direct fires their stills. And that may be one of the reasons why they have so much complexity to their spirit. Uh, it's just pervasive throughout all their releases. There's layers and layers of flavor. Uh, something I can often find challenging to pick apart, but it's why I enjoy whiskey so much. It's half challenge, half experience. Half nostalgia. Three halves make a whole, right? Hmm. Anyway, this bottle is bottled at 43% alcohol by volume here in Ontario. It doesn't say anything on the label about whether or not it's chill filtered or colored. I would assume there's some filtration going on at the very least uh, with anything that's bottled as low as 43%. The color itself, uh, I mean, it's a sherry age whiskey, so I'd expect some color to it. A little bit of an orange hue to this one. I don't know if that's off of the barrels or if it's off of uh, some caramel colorant, but uh, hey, we deal with what we've got, so important things to taste anyway. I understand that the 12-year-old was recently reformulated a little bit, which is good for me to hear because when I tried it for the first time, the only time actually, years ago, I thought it was good, but I didn't think it was great. Certainly didn't live up to the the bar of the 15-year-old and some of the other Glenn Farkless's that I love so much. So, interested to see if it has been changed, what it's all about now. Let's see. 
Oh wow. Yeah, it's a very full, fresh, fruity nose. Mm. Grapes and pears. Peaches. Some sort of red fruit. I don't want to say strawberry, I don't want to say cherry. Maybe a red currant. Something red but not too sweet. And toffee for sure, and a little bit of spice lingering in the background. Hmm. I remember what I said about complexity with Glenn Farkless. It's one of those things that every time I take a whiff or every time I take a taste that there's something else that I want to throw out there. Just an inkling. It's not always easy to put my finger on. A little bit sweet, but just beautiful. Just a, wet, a really lovely nose. Everything I would expect off of the nose for sure. It's sweet, but it's um, it's fruity, it's full, it's flavorful. The arrival is not the dried, sherried fruits that I expected. Mm. Ah, there it is. Sorry. Just working through the development, and it's just it's it's just lovely stuff. The arrival is very fresh. It's that fresh fruit that I talked about. That great little bit of a citrusy thing going on there as well. The grape and the peach. And a zestiness, an oaky, spicy zestiness. Right off the bat. But as it develops on the palate, that dries out. And those sherried fruits come on through the back end, big time. A lot of fig. And yeah, the raisins are there absolutely as well. And dried plum. And that spicy cinnamon nutmeg, baking spice, sherried spice. Very reminiscent of, um, to me anyway, Instead of the, the, the dried candied fruits. I mean, this this comes from my Italian relatives more than anything. So if you've ever had some of those uh, you know, Italian cookies with the, the, the candied fruits baked into them. Very reminiscent. It's a very interesting progression, actually. This is actually an interesting comparison to Glengoin as the first non-Glengoin whiskey. Because I think it shares a lot of similarities to the Glengoin 12 or even the 15 year old, which is a great compliment to something that's three years younger. Oh, it's just wonderful. Grapes and peaches and pears. Little underlying chocolate. Like I said, zesty, oaky spice develops through really dries out into those dried sherry notes, just rich dried sherry fruited fruit notes. Raisins and dried plums and figs and spice, cinnamon nutmeg spice that just lingers through the finish. And those sherry fruits linger with it. And I think that's one of the biggest differences I noticed between this and the Glengoyne 15. The complexity of finish on this surpasses it, in my opinion. Hmm. Just beautiful. Just really very impressive, I have to say. And the more time I spend with it, the more impressed I become. And again, complexity, right? The more time you spend with a complex single malt, the more impressive it is. The more time you have to pick it apart. It just, it's, it's wonderful stuff. Yeah, I was going to take another sip of it. I don't want to bore you guys with that. Highly recommended. Great value, too. This recently showed up in Ontario. I think it's $75, give or take a buck, anyway. $75 here for a 12-year-old single malt of this level of quality. Beautiful. It's absolutely beautiful. 
it might be something that I'm going to have to uh, buy another bottle of very fairly soon at the rate I'm going through this, but it's lovely stuff. If I had to grade it out, the more time I spend with it, the more time I think it's right there for me on par with uh, that Glen Glen going 15 year old. And if memory serves, I gave that an 87 out of 100. I think it's only fair to do the same for this. And you know what? If I spent more time with this, just tasting, smelling, tasting, smelling, I could see the mark even going up slightly higher than that. But maybe that's just a little bit of over-enthusiasm. So 87 out of 100. Very, very nice 12-year-old single malt. Highly recommended. Go grab a bottle. It's worth it. And... Uh, See you guys next time. You'll spend more time with this. Try to pick apart some of those flavor notes. Cheers.